Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of science. In this episode I'm going to be teaching you about elemental groupings. Um, so what are some of the ways that the elements are sorted on the periodic table. But before I get to that I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the origins of the various elements within our universe and how they actually came to be which you may not know. So let's get started. The secrets of the periodic table. Have you ever wondered how and why the periodic table is arranged as it is? Where did all the elements come from? So we'll be able to answer these questions um, by the end of this presentation. Stars and elements. It's been found that about 77% of the visible matter in the universe is hydrogen. And hydrogen, if you think back to our atoms, is just an atom with one proton. Okay, an atom with one proton we consider to be the element of hydrogen. And about 23% helium, which is an atom with two protons. Most of it being in the stars. The really big stars, though, can create heavier elements, so elements that have more protons within the nucleus. The elements that make planets and you. Hmm, okay. Let's keep going. Now, our sun is a main sequence star. It's a very ordinary star. There are actually stars that are far, far, far larger than our sun. And this video down here, star size comparison, will, I think, blow your mind. So it's worth going back and loading up my PowerPoint, clicking on this link, and hurting your brain a bit with just how big a star can get. If we come back to this picture here, I've got a little image over here of Earth, and Earth is tiny in comparison to our Sun, and our Sun is tiny in comparison to some of the stars out there in the universe. And this video here demonstrates that visually, uh, really nicely, so it's worth watching if you get a chance. And I'll add that it's in these really large stars that some of the heavier elements within our universe are created. Let's take a step forward. Creating elements through fusion. So a star produces an outward force as it fuses hydrogen into helium. So within its core here, the pressure and temperature is so great that the star is able to smash protons together and undergo nuclear fusion. It smashes hydrogen atoms together, so singular protons, smashes them together, creating helium. And that nuclear reaction produces an outward force, an outward force that radiates outward inside of the star. And that counteracts the force of gravity that's trying to crush the star inwards. And that balance holds the star up and allows the star to continue burning hydrogen. However, eventually this slows as the abundance of hydrogen diminishes and gravity becomes stronger than the outward force of fusion. So as you start to run low on hydrogen, the force of gravity becomes stronger or overtakes the force of the outward pressure of fusion. And that forces the star to begin to collapse in itself. As gravity squeezes it, squeezes it, the pressure and temperature of the core increases. And that actually drives the star to create fusion reactions where heavy elements are produced. The star begins to fuse helium together into heavier elements such as lithium. Once that new nuclear reaction takes place, then the outward pressure of fusion is restored. And so the star can once again hold itself up again as it burns heavier elements, or as it fuses heavier elements, I should say. This forces the star to compress, increasing the temperature and pressure within the star and fusing heavier elements together. This also makes the star grow larger, not more massive, but larger in size as it fuses heavier elements together. 
creating elements through fusion. A massive star can fuse elements all the way to iron, Fe, on the periodic table. So if you can see a periodic table in front of you right now, have a look at where iron is. A supermassive star can fuse elements all the way to iron until it's got an iron core. The heavier elements than iron are created in a supernova or explosion of various stars. You are literally made from atoms that used to exist inside of a star or created during a supernova. So if you bring your eyes to this diagram here, at the end of a star's lifetime, a supermassive star, you've got a core that's mainly made out of iron, iron ash. And it's almost like a, like a layer of elements on the star where you've got the heaviest in the center. Then we've got silicon sulfur fusion layer and we've got a magnesium neon oxygen layer carbon oxygen layer helium um, still fusing here hydrogen is still on the outside because it's the least dense element and an envelope of hydrogen on the outside that's left unburnt or unfused and eventually the star runs out of elements to fuse together the pressure and temperature is not high enough for the star to fuse elements higher or heavier than iron. And so because the star has run out of nuclear fuel, it collapses inwards. It collapses inwards as the force of gravity overtakes that force of fusion. And it crushes, that, crushes the star, crushes it in towards that iron core. And then it bounces off that iron core in a massive supernova explosion which looks something like this if you get a chance to google supernova images um, on the googles and there are some beautiful fantastic images of stars exploding and when stars explode they release all these heavier elements into the space around them and during that supernova during that explosion that's when temperatures and pressures increase even more and that's where the heavier elements past iron are created. A star had to die releasing its guts of heavy metals into space around it, into the space around it, in order for gravity to pull it back together to form the planets and you. So you are literally made from the remains of long dead stars. You are made out of the heavier elements beyond hydrogen and helium. And those heavier elements came from supermassive stars that exploded millions and millions of years ago. And then this gas coalesces, forming um, solar systems like our solar system, like our sun and the planets that orbit our sun. That all came from, from a long dead supermassive star that exploded a very long time ago. So you are literally made out of the remains of a star that exploded. The atoms inside of you that make you up used to exist inside of a star. You used to be a part of the most violent explosion the universe has to offer. I think that's a really cool fact to, to reflect upon. And that, in essence, is where the heavy elements in our universe come from. They come from the fusion reactions going on inside of supermassive stars. Now, our sun, it's not particularly large, it's pretty ordinary, it's a main sequence star, so it's pretty much only going to fuse up to helium, maybe a bit of lithium, and not be able to fuse past that. Um, so our sun is not particularly special in that regard. The universe, let's go bigger in scale. So there are over 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. That's our galaxy. So this is an image of a different galaxy in our sky. We exist in a galaxy which we've called the Milky Way. There are over 100 billion galaxies in the universe, in the observable universe, in the universe that we can see with our telescopes. At least 100 billion galaxies, each of those galaxies containing hundreds of billions of stars. Most of those stars have got multiple planets orbiting them. So it's worth thinking, are we really alone in this universe? There's so much stuff out there, 
but where is everyone? There is so much stuff out there. Surely there is some intelligent life out there, but we just haven't been able to find any. The distances between stars and between galaxies are just so massive. It's hard to imagine how massive they are that we just haven't been able to find any evidence of any other life in the universe. But surely, surely we can't be the only living creatures in the universe with this much stuff out there. If you want to hurt your brains a little bit more, then have a watch of these videos. Um, they are quite extraordinary and puts our existence into perspective. This image here, the Hubble Deep Field, is the most important image that the Hubble telescope that orbits around planet Earth has probably ever taken. This image here, the Hubble telescope focused on an area of sky maybe the size of a five cent piece held at arm's length, a tiny patch of sky. It pointed its cameras and it collected the light from that tiny patch of sky for about 11 days, I think it was. It collected all the light, all the photons that it received, and it created this image. Pretty much every single dot, every single speck of light that you see here, I think there's something like 10,000 specks of light here, and the vast, vast majority of those specks and dots of light that you see is an entire galaxy. Right, thousands upon thousands of galaxies just in our tiny patch of sky that the Hubble telescope uh, looked at. And each of these galaxies has hundreds of billions of stars. I mean, it's just incomprehensible how massive our universe is, the amount of stuff out there. If you want to continue blowing your mind, then have a watch of these two videos I've got linked here as well. Okay, so I think I'll stop it here for part one, and um, I'll make a part two video explaining um, how the elements are grouped within the periodic table. So thank you for watching. Um, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.